Hi, I'm Colleen with um, Just Paint It. I blog at Just Paint It. And tonight I'm going to show you um, a preview of a class that I'm teaching next Thursday. And it's this really easy blue coffee cup. It just has a few colors. And this one that I'm showing you tonight is on watercolor paper. Just regular uh, a pad of watercolor paper. <clears throat> now, the one we do in class, you can use either watercolor paper or a canvas. It's, a, it's up to you. Um, it doesn't change the technique that much. And I'm going to show you tonight um, how we do that. We hang out here every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time and I show different projects, different techniques. Sometimes I preview upcoming classes. It just kind of depends on how I feel at the time. So um, I'm just going to do a couple of things so I can see what I'm doing with, um, okay. All right. So what I'm going to first show you is how to do this background. And I need my glasses so I can see. Okay, it's really simple. And um, I'm taking two shades of brown. You could use whatever shade you want. But I just want to kind of show you what it's like on watercolor paper. So I'm just using regular craft paint. And I'm going to take this guy and move him over. And then with, um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Craft paint can dry pretty quickly, and watercolor paper is pretty absorbent. So between the two things, uh, you have to keep a fairly moist brush. So you can either slightly moisten your paper to start with, and then add your paint, and that's going to lighten it a little bit. And I've got two colors, okay, just to blend. There's a few ways you can do it. You can see there's no. This is random. This is not like. Uh, a method to my madness okay so that's one way moisten the paper first the other way is to have a fairly um, damp brush to start and I wouldn't say water down the paint it's pretty um, fluid as it is but you could just apply oops got a drip there um, just apply the paint to a dry piece of paper Okay, and you could cut, this is raw sienna, by the way, which is kind of a caramel brown color. And you can certainly do more than one layer, um, which is, in fact, what I did. And I'll show you in a few minutes how I did that. But you could just do one layer of raw sienna and then come back with their kind of a reddish brown over it if you want it. I kind of like to mix the two. Okay, I kind of like to just blend as I go. And if you like the brush stroke look, leave them in there. If you prefer to have it more modeled so that there's not a distinct um, brush stroke, um, you'll probably need two coats. It's totally up to you. But you can get a lot darker than this by adding an additional coat. Okay, so that's the background. In class um, next week, and there's a link in, the, uh, in my blog sidebar, um, that has information and registration. You could have whatever color you wanted. If brown doesn't work with your interior or whoever, if you were going to paint it as a gift, which is really a cool gift, um, you know, you could use any color that you wanted. Cream, green, anything would work. And you don't have to have the coffee cup blue. It could be any color you want. Okay. So, once you have your background painted and it's dry, then all we do is I draw these little patterns, okay? And it's just, this is on tracing paper, um, but they're all over my blog, and you can just copy them, download them, whatever you want to do. Blow them up to the size you want. This is a 9 by 12, okay, which is a pretty small. Uh, in class, we do it bigger because it's easier to uh, manipulate your brush when you're covering a larger area, generally speaking. So anyway, you would take your pattern, and I have graphite paper that's like carbon paper. Um, you can get it in craft art supply store. And you would put it up there under, in between your watercolor paper and your pattern. And you can use either a ballpoint pen or a little um, stylus. Okay, 
ballpoint pens work great. I just happen to have one. And then you just trace the pattern. Okay, so um, if there's something else you see on my blog, if there's not a pattern, just email me, ask me, leave me a comment, and I'll get it for you pretty easily. So I've already done that just to kind of save us some time here. So what I'm working on tonight is what's called underpainting. And typically, um, the majority of my tutorials are when you take your dominant color and then, so that's like a medium shade of whatever color I'm using. And then you would shade with a darker color and then you would highlight with a lighter color and then overpaint with that base coat. What that does, it's a layering, and what that does is um, if you're not really used to painting that much and you get kind of a, a, a stroke, you don't have the blending that you're used to, by using the layering method like this, it's going to cover up any imperfections that you don't like. Craft paint's really nice because it's not completely opaque. The What you put underneath it and then you cover it up, it's still going to show um, the underneath part. Tonight's a little different in that we're starting with a very, very dark color, which is um, this, it's called Midnight Blue, okay? Any dark, dark blue would work. And so all I'm going to do is just go right in the lines here, okay? Very simply. Again, watercolor paper, you either need a good amount of paint or you need a fairly damp brush, not so damp that it's runny, and I'm working on an easel, but um, that's, that's the key to watercolor paper. Canvas is not quite as absorbent as um, watercolor paper. I like them both equally for different things. I'm not going to worry about it being completely um, opaque because, like I said, we're going to fill in, not fill in, but we're going to apply other layers so it's not going to matter. I just kind of want to cover up my, um, what do you call it, my pattern. Okay. And then I'm going to do the little saucer, plate, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, I just use kind of whatever brush I have. The bigger the better. The bigger the brush, the more paint it holds so the less time it takes. That's kind of the way I look at it. But um, if you're not really comfortable with a big brush, then go down to a smaller brush. I use flats 99% of the time. If I'm not using a flat, I'm using a teeny tiny liner for detail. But the majority of the time, I use um, big old flats just because they, um, they hold a lot of paint. Now, that being said, um, if you only have a round, a pointed brush, then don't run out and go bunch of, buy a bunch of flats. You can get by with a round. That's just fine. Okay. As it dries, as it tends to dry, you will start to see some of the background coming, poking through. That's just the nature of um, craft paints. Okay, they're not completely opaque. So what I do is I'm going to move on while this dark blue is drying. I'm going to move on to the little steam or whatever you want to call it. And I've got just white. So I'm going to kind of take the white up following the lines. And then while it's still wet, kind of following the lines, it doesn't really matter because it's steam. But if you're one of those that has to stay within the line, I understand because I'm one of those. Now I'm just going to pick up kind of a really light tan color and just mix it in while that white paint is still wet. Okay? And just kind of following the curves as best you can. It's a little awkward. I'm sorry for the positioning. I wasn't quite sure how to do it other than on an easel, but um, you can make it darker if you want by adding more of the tan or lighter by adding more white. It's up to you. That's the fun of doing your own painting. I guess steam wouldn't have a tan, would it? It would just be all white. 
Oh well. Okay, I'm going to take it over the edge here so we can get a nice finish to the top. Now, typically I do two coats to almost everything. So if there's a little rough edge, I don't know if you, you probably can't see that on camera, um, then I'll just come back and tighten it up when I'm almost done. So back to the underpainting. I did forget the um, underneath here, but we might not get to it tonight because this is like, a, like I said, this is a preview of the class that I do, which is the classes run between an hour and a half and two hours, depending on how many students we have, because it's just like this. The only difference is that you as a student would also be in the hangout with me. So I could see your painting. You could ask me questions. Um, that's kind of the beauty of doing it through Google Plus is that we get to talk and share and all that. I do have video classes that if you totally don't like the idea of being on camera, which I understand, um, I'm filming videos now. So um, those will be available as well. Okay, um, I do a spiel just so that the paint will dry. Now, in class, I would make sure that this is completely opaque. And I don't think you can kind of see a little bit of the um, brown showing through, okay, on camera. But for time's sake, just so that you get the idea, I'm just going to come along with this lighter blue. It's not a light blue. It's lighter than the dark blue. And all I'm going to do is kind of just outline the cup. Not outline, um, define. That's a better word. Define the cup. Okay. Leaving some of the dark blue on the edge. And... As I do this, some of that dark blue is still going to show through. Oh, I didn't do the handle, did I? Okay, well, we may or may not get to that. We'll see. I like these previews to be as short and sweet as I can make them. I am not a short and sweet person. I talk a lot, and when it comes to painting, I talk even more. So forgive me on that, but that's, um, I could, I could do this all day long pretty much. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm showing, okay, here's the way I did it. And see, I've got this whole big dark space there, which I don't have. So let's, wallets, I covered it up because I wasn't looking at my um, pattern here. So I'm going to put that back in. Pretend you didn't see that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the saucer. And that's just taking the light lighter blue around except right in there where it's kind of like a, uh, a shadow, if you will, of the cup. If you paint a lot, you get used to um, having a light source, meaning where the light is shining from. And typically, I always bring it from this side down. I, I would be curious as to if you paint where your light source is usually because just seems like no matter what I do, my light source is always from the same direction. I need to kind of work on that. Okay. Again, no um, fancy strokes. This is all, I, it's not like color by number filling in, but it's pretty darn close, actually. Okay. It's what I like to call pretty foolproof, meaning if you, if you do make a mistake, it's pretty easy to come back and fix it because you're just coming back with um, with paint. And really, in this type of layering method, even though this is underpainting tonight, the more layers, the better. Okay, one thing about, again, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can. Watercolor paint, uh, watercolor paper, excuse me, will tend to buckle. And so where this one is nice and flat, that's because when I was completely done with this painting, I went back, I went back and I moistened with water the backside, laid it flat on some um, like wax paper or plastic wrap or something and stuck books on it. And that's how I do watercolor paper. I'm sure there's a better method. Okay, I'm just going to switch to a little smaller brush. And this is a number 12 flat. Okay, so it's about half an inch just to do the little handle. 
fairly quickly while the other dries. We could come back and do highlighting, but wet paint on wet paint is going to blend. It's not going to give you the um, marked highlight that we're going for, which basically on this coffee cup, why I want it is it's going to add something of a shine. Hopefully, that's the plan. See, I turn it, I can do it just following, or I turn it, I just use flats all the time. But again, that's what I'm comfortable with. Some people aren't as comfortable with these, so you use whatever works for you. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit up here, again with um, the dark blue, because it's just a little, so that we don't have our, now that I think about it, the steam wouldn't have brown. That's what I said, huh? Oh, well, too late now. And I'm just going to, because that's a horizontal stroke, I'm going to pull it down a bit and add a little bit of the lighter blue. Okay. A little bit more dark blue so we can see the, the roundness of the cup is what I'm going for. And that's just a little shadowing from the coffee cup. That's, that's what I was thinking anyway when I did this. Okay, so basically, that's almost it, okay, other than the white highlights. And it would be nice if I had a blow dryer, but it's in the other room, and that would be noisy and annoying. So we're just going to go with it. I'm just taking white, okay. It's just white paint. This is my favorite. It's called um, Wedding Cake by Martha Stewart. And I use her paints. If you visit my blog, if you stop by these hangouts periodically, I use these like all the time. And the reason is they're thicker, so they cover better, and they're multi-surface. So I could whip out a wine glass and we could do a wine glass. We could... Um, you know, I could take a piece of wood and it's all the same paint and it's really nice to be able to do that because if I was using this, which is a lovely paint, it's Ceram Coat, and I absolutely love Ceram Coat because of their colors and shades, it requires some mediums or priming or this or that when you're working with stuff. So, okay. So let's, I try, see, I filled, I filled the time with my words. So now I'm going to do just a little bit of the highlighting. And you'll get to see a little bit of the layering, I hope. That's the plan. Okay, so I'm going to start from up here. You see where it's starting to blend. I'm starting wider and then I just bring it down as if the light was hitting that. Now, one thing about acrylics, when you make a mistake, a boo-boo, if your paint is dry, um, excuse me, if you're base coat is dry. You can come along with a damp, clean brush and just kind of whisk that right off. Okay? You don't need to over go back and over paint. If you get it um, while it's still damp, it'll work great. Okay, now I'm also going to come along the edge there and a little bit add a little bit of dimension to the saucer and then to create a little bit of a ridge. I didn't do the shading underneath but that's okay you get the idea. We'll do that in class. Then a little bit over here and you can see even though that this is pure white it's not well, it kind of is on screen. So I've got a screen on my computer, which is right underneath you. You can't see it, but I can. Um, even though it's pure white, it is not um, transferring as pure white because of the dark base coat underneath it. So when you want a pure white on top of a dark color, you have to add two or three coats. Okay, so no worries there. 
you know, a lot of times it's a little freaky to go, oh, I don't want to add white to whatever, or black. Black is worse. Oh, my goodness, adding black. It took me a while to have that much, that many guts. Do you know what? I didn't do the light blue over here. I just saw that on the um, handle. So let's kind of bring that up a bit. We got the dark blue. We don't have the light blue. Okay. Again, no serious, no techniques. Anybody could paint this. <clears throat> you fill in the line. That's about it. Okay. So where else do we need a little white? I'd like to make this dark blue look more like a ridge. And the only way in painting to make something look dimensional is you've got to have light colors which make something appear closer to you and dark colors which make it appear to recede to the eye. So I've got the dark color. I've got the light blue, which is okay. But what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of white there and then over here just to give it that appearance of a ridge. You know how those saucers have the little ridge? Well, at least in my mind, they do. Okay, so that's about that. I want this a little brighter. Remember I said a couple coats of the white. And actually, you know what? I'm going to widen this just so that you see what happens. And it'll give you a little bit of uh, idea of how I do layering. Sorry, I don't like rough edges. You probably can't even see that, but it's kind of my little thing. Okay, and now, just here, we're going to kind of come along, and we want this to appear um, not flat. Okay, the handle, I want it to appear like it's more rounded. So I'm going to give it a little bit of highlighting. Now, if you get that where it's a little too wide, don't worry about it. Okay, you don't have to like switch to a liner brush to get this tiny little line of white. I'm going to show you why right now. Okay, so that's a lot of white. Remember how if you were here at the beginning, there's people popping in and out, and that's cool. Um, I talked about layering, which is typically the method that I use. So... <clears throat> What I'm going to do is take the medium blue, not the darkest and not the white, but the medium blue, and I'm going to come over, right over some of this white. And while it's wet, it's going to appear that you've lost the highlighting, but you haven't lost it at all. It's going to pop through as soon as it starts to dry. Just a little bit, it'll peek through. So I still have my dark blue. And then remember I made this a little um, lighter. So just on the edges, and what this does is this gives me an additional color. I've got the medium blue, I've got the um, white, and now I'm covering up part of that white, which is giving me like a, th well I've got now I've got blended because it was too, um, but that's okay. We'll just smush it in there, it'll be fine. And do the same thing over here, cover it up with the medium blue, and it's just going to knock it back a bit. And the same thing up here. You can let some of the white show through, but you don't want that much, because if you think about when you see a reflection of white on um, on a coffee cup, for instance, it doesn't have a whole perfect line. It's just where the light is hitting it. But you want a little bit to show through, but not the whole thing. And of course, if you go, well, I covered up too much. I want more to show through. Well, add some more white. It takes a few layers anyway. So, and then I want that dark to show up more, so I'm going to add a little bit more of the medium blue. With acrylic paints, with these, with craft paints, I, I should clarify that, not just acrylic, but craft paints, you have to add more layers than you would with artists tube paints. Those give you a much more opaque coverage. So um, just be aware of that. 
when you're doing that. You don't have to do, spend as much time mixing because you can get, you know, all the different shades that you could almost possibly want, though it's still fun to mix. But when you're um, painting, it's going to take a little bit more layer to um, to get a complete coverage if that's what you're going for. And again, well, I'm just going to leave that on the brush. Okay, I need to let it dry so you can see what it's doing. Because I'll, I'll tweak it forever. So I'm just going to let that dry. And then what I'm going to do is show it to you. Even though it's wet, it's going to give you a fairly decent idea. Okay, do you see the difference in between the white and then the medium blue and then in between where we covered up that white? It still shows a little bit. It's peeking through. And then right there, that white semicircle on the saucer, you see how it's starting to come through when it dries? That's layering, okay? And this is why I call this method foolproof because if you didn't like what you painted, you could start back with the dark blue and work your way up again and it would just be more layers when everything dries it doesn't matter if you did a um, well a zigzag might be kind of <laughs> weird but it would be okay so this is the coffee cup and then we would add the shading and um, that's how you do underpainting you start with your darkest tone and you work your way up so if you were going to use greens you'd start with a really really dark green and work your way up and it's really fun it's great for all kinds of things foliage uh, oh you name it I do use it a lot but also I use the layering so anyway I hope you stop by the blog just paint it and if you're interested in any classes um, stop by the blog there's information on my right sidebar um, next to where I write all the stuff there's little pictures of what's got what I've got planned for January and this is next week and then following this um, on the 31st of January we're doing a pink cupcake so that'll be demonstrated next Tuesday that's my freebie and then um, I host my regular classes all right thanks so much for coming by tonight I hope to see you again soon bye good night